St. Mary's College, the inauguration of Dr. Katie Conboy as the college's 14th president. One announcement before we begin, we request that you put your devices on silent mode for the duration of the ceremony. <clears throat> With that out of the way, we will begin. Please rise for the national anthem, sung by Brianna Kinyanjui, class of 2021 and admissions counselor, and remain standing for the invocation offered by Dr. Sibeli Webb, Department of Nursing Science. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Good and loving God, we have come together in your presence to witness and celebrate the inauguration of Dr. Katie Conboy as the 14th president of St. Mary's College. We thank you for her leadership over the last 17 months during a time that has included great challenges that were handled with great care, positive growth, and joy. We're grateful for Dr. Conboy's commitment, perspective, vision, and energy. May you bless and guide her and continue to sustain her, her family, and our whole community. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in person. We hold in our hearts friends who are not able to be here with us today, especially those who are sick or vulnerable. May illness be turned into health and sorrow be turned into joy. We thank you for the witness of the Sisters of the Holy Cross around the world and near at hand. May we honor their commitments to compassion, faith, prayer, and community. As we live our core values of learning, faith, justice, and community, may we always look to them for wisdom and guidance. Guide us as we learn, as we work for justice, and as we build up and hand down more of what is life-giving and good, help us to be signs of your presence and your love in the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to read the college's land acknowledgement statement. We wish to acknowledge and honor the native people and their traditional homelands on which we stand today. We particularly recognize the Pokagon Band of Potawatomi and the Miami who have been utilizing this land and its resources for many years and continue to do so today. With deep gratitude, we acknowledge the native people and their culture within our community as well as acknowledging the land 
upon which we gather, pray, learn, and work. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Titilayo Ufomata. I'm the Provost and Senior Vice President here at St. Mary's College. On behalf of the entire St. Mary's community, it is my privilege to welcome you, our guests and dignitaries, to this beautiful campus and to thank you for honoring our community with your presence at today's special occasion of the installation of our beloved president, Dr. Kerry Comboy, as the 14th president of St. Mary's College. Inaugurations celebrate important transitions in the life of an institution. They usher in high hopes of a community for a leader who would guide them, love them, and care for them. So much is vested in the new leader who becomes the torch bearer of the aspirations of his or her new community for its present and its future. One could imagine that on the president's part, that she or who or, or, or he would hope to be supported and appreciated at least some of the time. <laughs> Today, St. Mary's College is about to bestow on Kitty Comboy the power of its history and the essence of its present. As is customary on important occasions at St. Mary's College, I draw upon the wisdom of one, our, of one of our esteemed and revered ancestors, former president, Sister Madeleine Wolf, who um, you've all been hearing about uh, these past few days. Upon receiving her obedience, which in religious speak means assignment, as president of St. Mary's in 1934, Sister Madeleine reflected, and I quote in her words, I found myself responsible for a school 90 years old, a great heritage, a developing plant, a magnificent campus, potentials in faculty and students to dream for, to dream of and to work with. The best qualification I brought to my office were these. My ability to dream, my capacity to work. 90, nearly 90 years later, Dr. Katie Comboy could say the same words about herself with appropriate adjustments of date and number of students. I'm not sure which of her many talents she will list as the best qualifications she brought to her office. But in her time at the college, she has shown an ability for audacious dreams and a tremendous capacity for work. These have served her well so far. Our hope is that her, is that her ability to dream will never dim, and her capacity for work will not wane. We pray that she would continue to find fulfillment as she puts her heart and soul into this special work. Thank you for coming to celebrate with us today. We welcome Dr. Combo's family and friends, as well as our friends and neighbors from the tri-campus and delegates from other institutions. We're grateful to our host communities of South Bend 
and the surrounding towns of Northwest Indiana for your support. You have blessed us with your presence today and have enriched our community. Thank you for making it a memorable one for Katie and for St. Mary's. Now, it is my pleasure to invite those who will bring greetings and present calls to service to come to the podium in the order in which they are listed in the program. Thank you. Before I begin, I would like to recognize all of our student leaders who have helped put this together. On top of being full-time students, they helped plan an inauguration, which is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> but I'm Eleanor Hansen. I'm the student body president of St. Mary's College. The St. Mary's mission statement says that this is a place of intellectual vigor, aesthetic appreciation, religious sensibility, and social responsibility. St. Mary's fosters an inclusive environment where students are able to discover their talents and prepare to make a difference in this world. It is a part of that mission that creates strong female leaders. We remember these strong women such as Sister Madaliva, Mother Angela, Mother Pauline, Sister Alma, Sister Rose Havikin, and Sister Veronique. These women stood up for what they believed in and motivated others to do the same. Today, we are here to welcome another strong female leader into our community, President Katie Conboy. We threw her in the deep end and we expected her to swim, and we are fortunate, <laughs> and we witnessed her leadership when she helped us navigate a lockdown. We are fortunate to have someone with her capabilities helping us rebound after the persisting tragedy of the COVID-19 pandemic. All the leadership of our tri-campus community is gathered here today, and we've all been given the privilege to represent others. We all have a responsibility to speak our minds and do what is right. We also know that making change is not easy, but it's necessary. As leaders, we have to hold each other accountable and be willing to listen and truly hear the needs of those that we lead. One of my favorite poems about leadership comes from Amanda Lovelace's collection, where she says, when we empower ourselves, we inspire others to empower themselves. Step up and lead the way for others to follow in your footsteps. Encourage them to do better than you are able to because hope can never be lost as long as the future rests in the hands of our sisters. Be the light. President Convoy, in the darkness of the pandemic and the uncertainty of growing up, you have been a beacon of light for our students. A week ago, I had a conversation with President Convoy where she asked if she could be called a smick. <laughs> and for those of you who are familiar with the term smick, it's used to describe the intelligent, driven, and empowered women at St. Mary's. And we all hold this nickname. <laughs> we are proud of it. So, as a student body president of St. Mary's College, I would like to grant you the title, Head Smick. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Susan Latham and I serve as the Senior Vice Chair of the Academic Leadership Council. Today, as I do every morning when entering campus, I took time to pause and reflect. Why am I here? This morning ritual actually began when I was a student at St. Mary's. It's my favorite question to think about and I ask every student I teach to think about it every day. As a student and now as a member of our faculty, some days I ask, why am I here? But other days I ask, why am I here? Or why am I here? Why am I here at this place 
and at this time. The invitation to Dr. Katie Conboy's inauguration events quoted her. I love that St. Mary's is a place of dreamers and doers where we can use our imaginations and then roll up our sleeves to get the work done. End quote. Some mornings require that I'm more pragmatic and efficient, so I'll enter campus on Brother Andre Drive. Those mornings, when I think about why am I here, I'm usually zipping off the toll road and mentally rattling off a list of things that simply need to get done. I pass the inn at St. Mary's and think of the Sisters of the Holy Cross, and I'm reminded that these women who have generously shared the mission of the college with all of us know how to get things done. Other mornings require that I enter campus on the avenue. These are mornings that I dream about what is possible, hopes and aspirations we have for our students and for the college. Today, I slowly meandered down the avenue. Today is a day to dream. Dr. Conboy's strategic plan helps us to envision why we are here. She has provided the faculty with opportunities to dream more and to do more. She has charged us to achieve a culture of human dignity and solidarity, to establish St. Mary's as a leader in the social and economic, economic empowerment of women, to elevate our research focus, and to stabilize and enhance our financial performance. We have a lot of dreaming and doing ahead of us. Why are you here? Really think about it. I hope that you think about it every day of Dr. Conboy's presidency. Today we're here to celebrate the inauguration of the 14th president of St. Mary's College, Dr. Katie Conboy. It is a day of joy and thanksgiving. Today is about hospitality and inviting others into our community. We are here to acknowledge our trust in Dr. Conboy's leadership, and we are here to dream about how our community will be positively impacted under her presidency. Each and every one of us has unique contributions to make to the mission and life of St. Mary's College. We are here to express our gratitude to Dr. Conboy for the work she has done over the past year to guide us in realizing the future of St. Mary's. As a scared first-generation college student, continually asking, why am I here, gave me the confidence to find my calling. It filled me with curiosity, wonder, and anticipation. It gave me purpose and direction. Asking the question today, knowing Dr. Conboy's plan, instills the same feelings of hope and commitment. Dr. Conboy, faculty are here at this time and in this place to advance the vision and mission of the college every day in our collaborative work by doing and dreaming. Faculty imagine and are committed to creating a culture of belonging. Faculty are invested in girls and women at every point in their lives and in developing leaders who will use what they have learned to change the world. Our faculty are exceptional teachers and researchers and are committed to sharing these gifts with our students and the world. We are excited and energized by your vision. We are ready to collectively and wholeheartedly roll up our sleeves and get things done. I want you to imagine a traffic jam forming every morning on the avenue of doers and dreamers who are reminding themselves as we gather on this campus why we are all here together. That is how excited we are to having you lead us on this journey. On behalf of the faculty, I offer our sincerest congratulations and deepest gratitude to you, President Conboy. Thank you. Good afternoon. 
What a proud day for St. Mary's. My name is Ann Kearns-Davron, class of 98, and president of the Alumni Association Board of Directors. On behalf of the St. Mary's College Alumni Association and alumni near and far, many of whom are currently joining us via live stream, it is my distinct honor to welcome you to this momentous occasion celebrating the inauguration of Dr. Katie Conboy as our 14th president of St. Mary's College. For 177 years, St. Mary's has provided an education for women, now a few men in our graduate programs, that is grounded in our four core values of learning, community, faith and spirituality, and justice. Sister Madaliva once described the St. Mary's education as this. The liberal arts are most liberal, most liberating, when they rest on complete rather than on partial truth. Here, the Catholic College is the authentic exponent for the first 16 centuries of Christian arts and sciences. It is with this strong grounding foundation in our Catholic heritage, our liberal arts commitment, and our core values that we look to the future. Katie has embarked on her presidency with a strategic plan aptly entitled Revere and Revise. With this guiding document, the college is simultaneously focused on all that makes St. Mary's what she is all that we hope to revere and maintain, while also strategically positioning St. Mary's for a long, strong, and vibrant future. And already we've gotten a sneak peek into what that future will look like. A new office for student equity, renovation to Regina Hall to house the Center for Integrated Health Sciences, and two new graduate programs are just a few of the efforts already accomplished in Katie's short tenure. At the risk of quoting Katie back to Katie, and it's a good one, so it bears repeating, one of the things she says she loves about St. Mary's is that it is, quote, a place of dreamers and doers, where we can use our imaginations and then roll up our sleeves to get the work done. Speaking on behalf of the alumni, we welcome you, Katie, and are grateful for you getting that work done. For the enthusiasm, the ingenuity, and the grit already shown in just your first year and under unprecedented circumstances. As alumni, our thoughts and hearts are never too far from the current student body. Our wish for them is that their time on campus is one that is filled with faith, learning, adventure, growth, friendships, and community. As you continue your leadership of our beloved institution, please know that you have the support and prayers of the Alumni Association members, Alumni Board of Directors, and alumni across the globe. We are invested in the continued success and growth of St. Mary's and are standing by to assist in any way we can. The ties of St. Mary's will always bind us. I am thrilled and so hopeful to welcome you, President Conboy. Drawing on your love of the Irish language and on behalf of all St. Mary's alumni, to you I say, Kied Mille Falcha, 100,000 welcomes. May God bless your tenure. And to everyone gathered here today, I say, Go Bells. St. Mary's College and the University of Notre Dame have been intimately joined since their respective foundings, not simply by geographic geographical proximity, but much more profoundly by a common mission, mutual support, and deep personal bonds. We at Notre Dame know that we would have been a far lesser place without the contributions of Holy Cross sisters, leaders, faculty, staff, students, and alumni of St. Mary's yesterday and today. And I look forward to continuing that relationship into the future under the guiding hand of Dr. Conboy. Blessed Basil Moreau founded the Sisters of Holy Cross as well as the Holy Cross priests and brothers and originally sought to have the women and men joined in a single congregation. Although that plan was not approved by Rome, the Sisters and St. Mary's College, animated by shared spiritual charism, have been partners and collaborators in the work of providing a distinctively Holy Cross education. And we are fortunate to have been joined in this work by Holy Cross College, an invaluable partner to us and a foundation of the Holy Cross Brothers. 
The founder of Notre Dame, Father Soren, arrived to establish a university in 1842 in this place, and four sisters soon journeyed from France to join the mission, arriving in South Bend in 1843. Initially shocked by the austere conditions, these young women showed such dedication to the difficult and demanding work that three other young women asked to join their group in the first year. The sisters played an integral role in ensuring the flourishing of Notre Dame in those tenuous early days as teachers, administrators, and more. They gave not only selfless dedication and hard work, when the Great Fire of 1879 destroyed the main building on the campus of Notre Dame, it was the Sisters of Holy Cross and the students and alumni of St. Mary's who gave Notre Dame the statue of Mary atop the Golden Dome. In his book on the history of Notre Dame, Professor Thomas Schlereth wrote that the university, in the university's early decades, there was hardly a facet of Notre Dame life the Sisters did not influence. Soon after the sisters' arrival in 1848, St. Mary's was founded and thus began a long and truly distinguished history of educating women in the Holy Cross tradition. The relationship between Notre Dame and St. Mary's was not only grounded in their shared ministry of education, but in a deep friendship. Mother Mary Angela Gillespie was not only the founder of St. Mary's, she was one of Father Soren's closest confidants. Father Soren and Mother Angela worked together to move the college from Bertrand, Michigan, and together they provided support for Union soldiers in the Civil War, and they collaborated on many other ventures. Soren knew well the burden and loneliness of leadership, but he clearly found personal support in Mother Angela. When she passed her away, Soren wrote, quote, no death has affected me as the death of dear Mother Angela. From the first day she entered the community until her last, she was above all the life, the encouraging soul, and the delight of all she met. To her, the congregation owes a debt we will never forget." Unquote. St. Mary's and Notre Dame are two distinct institutions, each with their own traditions and identities, but we have an affinity grounded in a common mission, a spirit of collaboration, and indeed friendship that has bonded the two institutions from those early years to the present. Holy Cross College shares in that, that mission in that, and in this deep collaboration and friendship. We are truly thankful for all that has been and hopeful for what is to come. And I'm personally and profess professionally delighted to work with Dr. Convoy, herself a graduate of Notre Dame, and the second Convoy I've had the pleasure of working with as her sister Missy is our longtime senior deputy director of athletics. Her invaluable experience as an administrator and faculty member at Simmons and Stonehill, as well as her vision and commitment to St. Mary's mission are a strong foundation as she leads St. Mary's toward an even brighter future. I've enjoyed getting to know you, Dr. Convoy, and look forward to working together as we seek to make a difference in the lives of our students in the greater South Bend region, in the nation, and around the world. Congratulations to all, and especially to you, Dr. Convoy, God bless. Go Irish, go Bells, go Saints. <laughs>
This is not an easy time to be a college president and a president of a liberal arts college in particular. During my own inauguration just last week, I mentioned that the public questions the practicality and the sufficiency of liberal arts college's hallmark strengths, our commitment to teaching critical thinking, exemplary writing, collaboration and teamwork, and the ability to understand difference and engage with those whose life experiences are different from our own. How will our critics ask, is what any of you just described, President White, going to help my student find a job worthy of the investment to attend a college like St. Mary's? Those of us who love liberal arts colleges know the liberal arts college curriculum and the residential community, faculty mentorship, supportive staff, and high impact educational practices St. Mary's offers prepares your students well for the jobs of today and for the jobs of tomorrow yet to be imagined. However, the word liberal and arts are not well understood by folks who have not had the chance to be initiated into what some see as an, as an exclusive club, not for people like me. Some think liberal means our institutions have something to do with politics. And some think arts means our sole focus is preparing our graduates to work at Michael's. Now, I love me some Michaels. <laughs> These are just a few of the many challenges liberal arts colleges and liberal arts college presidents face. And these challenges are precisely the reason that you have absolutely chosen the very best person, Dr. Katie Conboy, to lead St. Mary's College. President Conboy is deeply committed, working together with all members of the St. Mary's community to deliver an educational experience that is accessible, relevant, inclusive, and impactful to a wide diversity of talented women who seek to pursue their college education here on your beautiful campus. Moreover, she is an authentic, compassionate, enthusiastic, values-driven leader for whom I have great respect. Presidential leadership at this moment requires presidents who are able to inspire their institutions to embrace change. Maya Angelou once said, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. The sad notices the higher education community has received over the past few years informing us of the closure of yet another liberal arts college is a strong message that maintaining our status quo is not a successful strategy for ensuring institutions like St. Mary's and my own DePauw flourish well into the future. Now, I'm not in any way bringing proverbial rain to this incredible celebration. Instead, I am underscoring the importance of the revere and revise collaborative change strategy that President Conboy is leading. The changes envisioned in your strategic plan will gird St. Mary's well when the storms of life are raging, as go the words of one of my favorite spirituals, and enable all to delight in the beauty of the St. Mary's mission and vision for the future. Congratulations, President Convoy. Know you can count on me, and I call on all assembled here to stand by you, which are the next lines in that spiritual I just quoted, for support, cheerleading, and as, an and as a partner in the important work we have been called to do, educating the next generation of amazing young people to go out and make our world a better place. Good afternoon. It's so good to see all of you as we are entering through our second year of a pandemic. And of course, that's why we are a little bit bladed compared to normal in celebrating our new president of St. Mary's College. It's also a true honor and privilege to, to join you here today for the, to celebrate the beginning of St. Mary's new chapter 
And it's also uh, great to have the occasion, I appreciate to have the occasion to don my academic regalia that I have not been able to do since uh, my doctoral hooding over 12 years ago. <laughs> so those uh, in the audience that may be wondering what, does our what did our mayor study uh, for his doctoral uh, dissertation, uh, I won't get into the details, but the, the broad degree was Fiscal Ocean Science and Engineering. And the two follow-up questions to that I'll answer very quickly from the University of Delaware. And yes, I too am acutely aware there are no oceans in Indiana. <laughs> and a, a first, a, a little bit of a disclaimer, as we know that uh, the official South Bend city limits are, do not extend into uh, St. Mary's campus, but uh, St. Mary's is an integral part of our community not just physically the gateway into the city of South Bend from, from the interstate, but also the community and, and the people that make up our community. We know faculty, staff, uh, students, and alumni uh, make South Bend very much the community that it is, and we appreciate everything you do here, here in our community. Of course, I, I'm biased. Uh, I married into the St. Mary's family. My wife, Kelly Mitros, is a proud uh, Bell alum, uh, class of 2006. <laughs> and we both uh, started our formal education on campus at the original ECDC. You may, uh, you may also uh, know uh, one of my classmates at ECDC, uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, uh, <laughs> who, I understand uh, our new president babysat Pete Buttigieg when he was growing up. So I don't know how many, how many colleges can say their president babysat a sitting U.S. cabinet member. <laughs> but we're excited about uh, the future here uh, at St. Mary's, and as we said, uh, you know, we're going through some difficult times, not just with the pandemic. This is a time when uh, our civic institutions are being strained and being tested. Uh, the future of work uh, is uncertain, and uh, a lot of challenges lie ahead. But we know we have the right leader in President Katie Conboy, and are delighted to have her be the one at the helm to navigate us through these challenging times and lead us through this next chapter. And as we go through together, uh, we just call on the entire St. Mary's College community. You guys are already stepping up in so many ways and, uh, and, and making this community better, but this is not a time to despair. This is a time to double our efforts and truly roll up our sleeves to make this community the one we all know we can be, a home where everyone can thrive. So thank you again, and congratulations, Madam President.
It is my very great pleasure to officially greet Dr. Katie Conboy as the 14th president of St. Mary's College. I'm Sister Veronique Guidover, and I'm the president for the sisters. I'm also a graduate of St. Mary's, and it is humbling to follow. I'm a music major from St. Mary's, so it's humbling to follow that beautiful interview. <laughs> the Sisters of the Holy Cross began their educational mission in the United States in Bertrand, Michigan in 1844. The fledgling school grew as a collaborative ministry with the sisters and other dedicated lay women. So it is my very great pleasure to continue that collaboration. In 1855, the school, literally the buildings, students, staff, and sisters moved to this campus, St. Mary's of the Immaculate Conception. St. Mary's is also the mother house and home of the congregation's general administration. We are privileged to share this beautiful campus and to be the founders and continuing sponsors of this cherished educational ministry. This inauguration of Dr. Conboy is an opportunity to renew and deepen the close relational ties of the college and the congregation and to pledge our ongoing commitment to its mission of educating minds and hearts of students to make a positive difference in this world. Dr. Conboy is no stranger to us as she's led with distinction since June 2020. She also knows the rich heritage of Holy Cross having worked at Stonehill College, a ministry of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Expertise in women's education grew as she worked at Simmons University Weaving together her life experiences, Katie is uniquely poised to enable the mission of St. Mary's to grow and blossom in new and critical ways as she engages her own passion to make a difference in the world. As president of St. Mary's, she personally embodies its important values of intellectual vigor, and curiosity. She daily empowers those on campus and friends of the college around the globe to appreciate their unique role in the universal search for truth and beauty. Katie demonstrates values of religious sensibility and civic responsibility as she works toward sustainability of our common home. She is bold when encountering the complex needs and challenges of this contemporary world, inviting us to think critically and creatively about the natural world and human culture for the sake of the common good. She exemplifies the mission of St. Mary's College as she serves and lives the dream of Blessed Basil Moreau, founder of the Congregations of Holy Cross, putting her considerable talents and gifts at the service of others, preparing the world for better times than our own. Dr. Conboy stands on the shoulders of other strong women leaders at St. Mary's. Mother Angela Gillespie, who oversaw the move of this campus and facilitated the designing of the iconic avenue. Mother Pauline O'Neill, who saw the unique needs of college women and built Lamon Hall in the years of the Great Depression. Sister Madeleine Wolf, a dreamer, poet, and global educator who invited students into the realms of discovery. Sister Mary Immaculate Creek, an alumna and longtime professor at St. Mary's, wrote a history of the college called A Panorama 1844 to 1977. So Katie, as you continue to write your own chapters, perhaps with a poem and a song too, but as you write your own chapters into this history, I look forward to experiencing the new frontiers to which your creativity,
compassion, and global perspective will lead as you engage the eager minds and hearts of St. Mary's students, faculty, alum, friends, and the sisters. Frederick Buchner wrote, the place God calls us is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. We are so graced that you have listened to God's call in your life and that your deep gladness and the world's hunger for wholeness and justice drew you here to St. Mary's. The Sisters of the Holy Cross join you in this exciting ministry of educating women and men to make a positive difference in our world. We look forward to this amazing journey ahead. Congratulations, blessings, and welcome, Katie. chair of the St. Mary's College Board of Trustees, it is my honor and pleasure to represent the board and our entire community at the investiture of Dr. Katie Conboy. By act of the Board of Trustees of St. Mary's College, Dr. Katie Conboy has been appointed the 14th president of St. Mary's Conboy, uh, St. Mary's College. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, would you like to come up? Dr. Conboy, in accepting this position, do you accept your responsibility to advance the mission of St. Mary's College as a sponsored institution of the Congregation of the Holy Cross? I do. Do you affirm this college's commitment to a vital engagement with the liberal arts, to educating both undergraduate women and graduate students of all genders, and to transforming lives? I do. Do you affirm this college's commitment to living out the rich possibilities of our Catholic tradition? I do. Do you recognize your responsibility to lead this institution in collaboration with all members of this community and to foster our shared commitment to the intellectual, spiritual, social, and physical development of all St. Mary's College students? I do. I invite all of you now to extend your right hand in a blessing and join me in prayer. Good and gracious God, spirit of wisdom, loving teacher, assist with your counsel and fortitude, Katie Conboy, the 14th president of St. Mary's College. Grant that her administration be conducted with integrity and compassion, energy and strength, as the power of your love will enable her to teach by word and example. Guide her and all of us in the ways of justice and peace so that St. Mary's College will thrive under her leadership and become an even greater force for positive change in the wide world beyond this campus. We ask this through our patroness Mary and through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dr. Katie Conboy by virtue of the authority of the Board of Trustees of St. Mary's College, I entrust to your care this walking stick of Sister Madeleine Wolf, which represents her promise to the students of the college you now lead to discover themselves, discover their universe, and discover their place in it. I place over your shoulders the symbol of the high office which you now hold. It is now my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Katie Conboy, 14th President of St. Mary's College.
you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's a little Elvis in that, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. No one tells you how many times they're going to say the 14th president of St. Mary's College. It's, it's been a little overwhelming. I think it's over after today. Well, thank you, Gretchen. And thank you all. I know I have to ask your indulgence as I say a few words. And first, I want to say a number of thank yous. So I have family and old friends here today who are my constant support system, starting with my husband, Tom O'Grady. Tom and I met across the road 41 years ago this fall. And we were married across the road in the Basilica five years later. Our 36-year marriage has been one big adventure. And he's all in with me for this new chapter here at St. Mary's. I want to thank our three wonderful daughters who each made extraordinary efforts to be here today and share it with us. Maria flew in from her home in Johannesburg, South Africa, Katrina from Boston, Massachusetts, and Siobhan from Cairo, Egypt. Our son-in-law, Tim McDonnell, is sorely missed, but someone had to stay in Cairo with the dog. <laughs> and while I'm perched on that absent in-law branch of the family tree, I also want to thank Tom's two sisters, his four brothers, and our four sisters-in-law for their decades of love and support since I entered their lives and they entered mine. Tom's late parents, Leah and Brendan, embraced me as a daughter. Brendan O'Grady, Notre Dame class of 1947, would be so happy with what is bringing us all together today. My own mother, Tane Conboy, who is a beacon of light and love to all of us, is right here, front and center. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my father's around here somewhere, too. Joe Comboy never missed a party when he was alive. And students, he will definitely be dancing with us at the silent disco tomorrow night. <laughs> All three of my loving sisters are here, Maura Fowler, Missy Conboy, and Mandy Carmona, as well as Gretchen Martins, who is an extra sister to us all. I'm also very moved to have a brother-in-law, four nieces, and several cousins in the Convoy and Kerr branches of my family here in the room today. And we're going to go ahead and call the three generations of the McCarthy family our cousins as well. We've shared many joys and sorrows that have bonded our families together for almost four decades. And it makes this day even more special to me that the five McCarthy sisters are here with their matriarch, Barbara Triple McCarthy O'Keefe, a member of the St. Mary's College class of 1956. Thank you to all the sisters of the Holy Cross and especially their leadership team whose focus on the future is a constant inspiration. Thank you to the past presidents of this college. I'm grateful to the Board of Trustees, in particular our current board chair, Gretchen Flicker, who's been a generous and supportive partner in my work. And I also want to thank four dedicated past chairs who are here today. Mary Burke, Bill Schmuel, Debbie Schwiebert, and Sister Joan Marie Stedman. Many other past board members are also with us, which says so much about their devotion to this college. And, of course, I steadily feel the kindness and support of students, faculty, staff, and alumni. Thank you and welcome to all the academic delegates, including delegates from both Stonehill College, where I spent the first 26 years of my academic career, and also from Simmons University, where I spent the next seven. Thank you to the platform party. And uh, I especially want to note my VPs who make up my executive team here at St. Mary's and special greetings and thank yous to all our speakers who have just welcomed me and honored me with my presidential charges. To all of you, I will try to live up to your sacred trust. 
I want to give special recognition and thanks to all the members of the Inauguration Committee led by the amazing Sherry Rodriguez and Libby Coulterides. They assembled a small army of volunteers, all of whom have gone above and beyond in planning all the elements of this joyful day and indeed the entire preceding week. Our faculty marshal, Professor Christopher Dunlap, somehow managed a huge array of inauguration details while also chairing the Academic Leadership Council and apparently also teaching his chemistry classes. <laughs> and finally, my gratitude to the Presidential Search Committee. You'll see their names in the program. You helped me fall in love with St. Mary's College before I officially stepped foot on the campus on June 1st, 2020. You somehow got me humming, quite improbably, I might add, that jazz standard, back home again in Indiana, more than three decades after I had become a dyed-in-the-wool proper Bostonian. Seriously, though, as I look out on all this colorful plumage, all these vibrant caps and gowns and hoods, signifying so many academic institutions and so many academic disciplines, I can't help but feel that I am with my flock. In the world of academia, we are truly birds of a feather. And you affirm that at St. Mary's College, I have come home to roost. So thank you. Thank you all. Recently, traveling back cross country from the east, I found myself standing in front of a wayfinding map at a service area just over the Indiana border. You all know what those orienting guides look like. You see them in parks and malls and museums. And they always highlight a marker or an arrow accompanied by the words, you are here. And I never look at one of these without thinking there's something existential in that little sentence. You are here. But here, as, as it's identified on the map, is almost never your actual destination. You're on your way somewhere, and you stopped at the map to understand the relationship between where you are, where you've been, and where you're trying to go. Today, I stand before you as the 14th president of St. Mary's College. I am here. We are all here. Where are we trying to go? What is this journey we've embarked on together? I say have embarked on, the present perfect tense for the grammarians here today, as a small nod to the fact that we're actually in an unusual situation. After all, I've just been formally installed, bling and all, <laughs> nine days into my 17th month as president. <laughs> we are not just setting out together. We set out almost a year and a half ago, and we have already supported each other through a staggeringly difficult period. One of the most distressing, heartbreaking, and exhausting moments in modern global history. And yet, at St. Mary's, we also made robust plans for the future of this college while coping with the COVID-19 crisis. And we're already launching those plans. So I've had to think hard about what I want to say today to people with whom I'm already in the middle of things. Yes, present perfect seems like the perfect tense for the moment. It allows me to acknowledge that our journey is underway while also continuing to imagine how our destination might represent a more perfect future. I know what some of you are thinking. This is the moment when she's going to share a poem with us. <laughs> no, you'll have to wait for that. Instead, I want to reflect on a couple of books of resonant prose by British writer Robert McFarlane, books that I spent many hours reading last summer. Braiding together cartography, geography, geology, natural history, art, mythology, and literature, McFarlane explores the relationship of human beings to their landscapes. The two books I read happen to use the word journey in their subtitles, The Old Ways, A Journey on Foot, 
and Underland, a deep time journey. The first of these, The Old Ways, recounts McFarland's efforts to trace on foot ancient routes across England, Scotland, and elsewhere on the globe. Paths carved out by the constant travel of earlier people or animals. Routes where he discovered the old persisted alongside and despite the new. And where ancient features secretly share the landscape with the living as they go about their business. The second one, Underland, explores the invisible worlds teeming directly beneath our feet. Not only the habitats, sometimes microscopic, of animals and insects that dwell beneath the surface of the earth, but also the caves, tunnels, and secret passages where our human ancestors found shelter or safety or comfort and consciously left evidence that they were here. If the marks our ancestors left walking on the surface of the land are a kind of fossilized footprints, well, the common mark left in these underworld spaces is a handprint created by someone pressing a palm to a cave wall and blowing a mouth of ochre dust against the back of the hand to leave the image. Calcite will run over these prints, sealing them in, McFarlane explains. The prints will survive for more than 35,000 years. Referring to these handprints as signs, McFarlane asks, signs of what? Of joy, of warning, of art, of life in the darkness? Ultimately, he interprets the symbol as an open-handed encounter across time, a greeting, a touch, a gesture of connection. As I read these books, I found myself thinking about how every life is a journey, about how my own life feels like a winding trail that has brought me to this place and this time, and thinking also about the journey of St. Mary's College, all the rich life and history that precedes this moment when my path intersects with the college's path and with the multitude of paths of all of you here. For the past 13 days, the college has posted stories about our 13 previous presidents. Reading each day about these institutional ancestors, their leadership and their visions for St. Mary's and their accomplishments, I have actually felt their open hands reaching out to me across generations that bridge more than a century and a half of common enterprise. If we let ourselves be in tune with this, the connection is powerful. Every day, we walk through buildings those ancestors built, enjoy the beautiful grounds they planted, immerse ourselves in academic programs they launched, benefit from funds they raised, and meet the loyal alumni whose education they helped make possible. Even these brief stories about past leaders have inspired me to ask my central question for today. How, in the coming years, will we honor this place that is shared across time, a place where our ancestors are among us in person, with us in stories, and in some cases, literally buried in the land? A place where we who serve the college today have the responsibility to imagine ourselves, to project ourselves as ancestors for future generations of students, faculty, and staff whom we will never know. What, in short, does our stretch of the St. Mary's journey entail? What mark, what signifying handprint will we leave? And how will St. Mary's be better for our efforts? Well, let's start by confirming that the foundation of St. Mary's must never change, that we will remain a Catholic women's residential liberal arts college. <laughs> An 
And it will remain so because the world needs colleges and universities inspired by faith that wrestle with big and enduring questions. The world needs colleges and universities that develop people of moral imagination and civic commitment. People who will build community, strive for justice, lift up the least advantaged, and collaborate to steward our planet. The world needs colleges and universities that avow, as their first priority, the ethical, social, and economic empowerment of women. And the world needs colleges and universities that take seriously what's at the core of a liberal arts education, a kind of learning that is broadening, deepening, and liberating for its students. A kind of learning that can be accomplished only when the curriculum invites exploration, stimulates profound interdisciplinary curiosity, and encourages dialogue, self-reflection, and personal growth. The world needs St. Mary's, and St. Mary's College is here. But let's also acknowledge that while our foundation is rock solid, change elsewhere in the overall structure is not only inevitable, but desirable. Indeed, change is the only reason we're still here today. Our legacy is inextricably tied to the Sisters of the Holy Cross, and their history shows a faithful commitment to reflect on the signs of the times, discern the needs of God's people and our world, and respond as we are able. Since their founding of St. Mary's in 1844, the sisters have looked for what the world needed in every era, and they have responded with capacious imagination. Since they transitioned the college to lay leadership, we have followed their example. As you might guess, it is not by coincidence that the next leg of the St. Mary's journey is called revere and revise. Many of you know that phrase, revere and revise, as the title of our approved strategic plan, a sort of motto for the ambitious goals we have already set for 2030. We are here now, but in the new plan, we have unfolded a roadmap for the next decade at St. Mary's College one that looks back even as we surge forward, one that allows us to provide St. Mary's, to provide a St. Mary's answer to the question of what the world needs now. The vision is simple, that St. Mary's will be acclaimed for a diverse student body educated to promote justice and human dignity in their communities and their careers, and that we will be recognized for national leadership in empowering, enriching, and advancing women at all stages of life. So, what must change for us to realize these goals? First, if the world needs graduates who build legacies of justice, we will need to begin by modeling a more just community on our own campus a community where every constituency must become more diverse as we commit ourselves to a culture of belonging and mattering. Catholic social teaching requires our dedication to human dignity, and the signs of the times invite us to be invigorated by difference, animated by inclusive values. This work will take many forms, from reducing social and economic barriers to student success, to ensuring a, an inclusive curriculum and inclusive pedagogies, to reframing our residential experience, to encouraging dialogue and civil discourse, to understanding the rich diversity of the world's faith traditions. And success will require the effort and attention of every member of our community. If we also intend to be recognized for national leadership in empowering, enriching, and advancing women at all stages of life, we will need to expand our focus well beyond just undergraduate and graduate education. As the only women's college in the state of Indiana and one of fewer than three dozen in the United States, we have a special obligation to ensure that women are prepared to participate in the transformation of our democracy. 
Our undergraduates must connect the liberal arts and professional preparation through robust curriculum to career programming and accelerated pathways to graduate education. And beyond attending to our traditional undergraduate and graduate programs, we will expand our relevance to our city, our region, and our far-flung alumnae, augmenting our expertise in order to serve girls and women at every point in the life cycle. This work will involve growing a suite of pre-college academic and leadership programs for girls, developing a full range of programming for adult women seeking to enter or re-enter the workforce, and providing both credentialing and enrichment opportunities for our alums throughout their lives. We can do that in part because of our extraordinary faculty whose creativity and research output are remarkable for an institution of our size and type. They guide and accompany students in rigorous inquiry, building skills and capacity for evidence-based practices across the entire curriculum. They, along with many staff partners, engage the community by collaborating on experiential learning opportunities, internships, practicums, and clinical placements. But we must give them more support, and our more perfect future will include enhanced resources for faculty to conduct their research, significant new funding for student researchers in all disciplines, new support for faculty seeking grants and fellowships, and new dedicated support for students to secure postgraduate fellowships and awards. At St. Mary's, we must elevate research to be a signature element of our educational focus. 17 months and nine days into my presidency, I have unbounded confidence in these goals. When I stood on this campus on February 12th, 2020, meeting students, faculty, and staff for the first time at the announcement of my appointment, I had the audacity to offer assertive words about the kind of community I hoped we would be for each other. One month later, the world changed literally overnight. And then the headlines became more dire with every passing day. But I have to tell you that a global pandemic, a racial reckoning, a divisive presidential election, an attack on our capital, a national culture marked by increasing extremism and intolerance, and an international milieu characterized by hunger, displacement, economic inequity, global warming, tribalism and terrorism have only convinced me that we have an extraordinary opportunity at St. Mary's. Let's put a hand to the wall and leave our imprint. We have set the course, and now we must stay the course. We must get there from here. Which puts us back on the footpath I started with, the journey I referenced at the outset and the metaphors provided by those two wonderful books by Robert McFarlane. In fact, I'm going to return to McFarlane just to pivot toward the poem you knew I was going to fit in eventually. <laughs> the compact between writing and walking, McFarlane says, is almost as old as literature. A walk is only a step away from a story, and every path tells. What drew me to the poem I want to share with you, A Journey by the celebrated American poet Nikki Giovanni, was not only its substance, which is quite straightforward and probably needs little professorial unpacking, but also its form. The only punctuation Giovanni uses in the poem is ellipses, 33 of them. <laughs> The effect of that conspicuous spacing on the page is mimetic of the steps, the footsteps of a literal journey. The poem describes a journey, but it also is a journey, experienced in step-sized increments of language by the reader's eye and ear. Here's the poem, A Journey. It's a journey that I propose I am not the guide, nor technical assistant. 
I will be your fellow passenger. Though the rail has been ridden, winter clouds cover autumn's exuberant quilt, we must provide our own guideposts. I have heard from previous visitors, the road washes out sometimes, and passengers are compelled to continue groping or turn back. I am not afraid. I am not afraid of rough spots or lonely times. I don't fear the success of this endeavor. I am raw in a space not to be discovered, but invented. I promise you nothing. I accept your promise of the same. We are simply riding a wave that may carry or crash. It's a journey, and I want to go. Obviously, Giovanni's poem is a parable. It's an instructive story told in highly flexible verse stanzas. And what moved me and won my attention from the very first time I read it was the earned wisdom imparted by the speaker in the poem. So much of that wisdom dovetails with my sense of how our journey at St. Mary's College will proceed. I will be your fellow passenger. We are all in this journey together. We must provide our own guideposts. There is no well-worn path forward. We must blaze the trail as we go. I am not afraid. We must act on the courage of our convictions. It's a journey, and I want to go. As I said at the beginning of my remarks, I fell in love with St. Mary's, with the idea of St. Mary's, with the possibilities of St. Mary's before I ever set foot on the campus. And now, like so many of you gathered here today, I am in love with the reality of St. Mary's, with the here where I have found myself, as you have found yourselves in more ways than one. Yes, life is a journey. Sometimes it seems like an unmarked trail, sometimes like a lightly trodden path. Sometimes it seems like an interstate highway with service areas and wayfinding maps. And sometimes it's a long, tree-lined avenue that takes you where you want to be, that takes you here. Thank you, and thank you for your confidence in me. that for a moment. I'm pleased to invite everyone here to a reception in President Convoy's honor that will be held immediately after this ceremony in the Kushwa Leighton Library. This celebration will end with an academic recession led by the stage party that will come up the aisles and go out through the lobby of the auditorium, followed by those who processed in. All other guests should please remain at their seats during this recession. But first, I ask that everyone rise for the benediction offered by Kimberlyn Martin Troy, class of 2000 and trustee, and remain standing for the bells of St. Mary's performed by the St. Mary's Women's Choir under the direction of Dr. Nancy Mank. Thank you.
Let us express our gratitude. Spirit of life, we thank you for the time we have spent together in this place. As we close our celebration, we are grateful you are with us everywhere we go. Grant us peace in our hearts as we go forth to know, love, and serve. May our daily living transform our world into a place of love, justice, and peace.